Kolmogorov complexity is a central concept in the field of algorithmic information theory. It's a way of measuring information, and it can be thought of as complementary to Shannon's classical information theory. Classical information theory deals with information sources that output symbols at certain frequencies, and it provides methods for measuring how much information is transmitted by an information source. Kolmogorov complexity offers a way of measuring how much information is present in a given object or message, a specific sequence of symbols. And as part of algorithmic information theory, Kolmogorov complexity involves algorithms. An algorithm is essentially a series of instructions to perform a certain task, and these instructions are often written in a programming language. Before getting into how Kolmogorov complexity works, I'd like to give a very basic introduction to the Python programming language. This will make it much easier to understand Kolmogorov complexity. If you're already familiar with programming, this will be extremely simple, and if you've never programmed before, don't worry, this won't be very difficult at all. To start using Python, all you have to do is open your web browser and go to www.activestate.com slash activepython. Then click the link to download ActivePython, save the file, and once it's done downloading, open it and install it. I'm assuming most of you are on Windows, and if you're not, I'll assume you know what you're doing. Once ActivePython is finished installing, you can open the Python interactive shell. On Windows, that's under the Start menu, Programs, Active State, Active Python 2.6, and Python interactive shell. The shell should look something like this. It's a command line. You can enter instructions after the command prompt and hit Return, and it will process those instructions and display the result. So, how do we write things in Python? Let's start with something very basic. Type in the number 4 and hit Return. What will happen is it will display display the number 4 on a new line and then bring you back to the command prompt. Now, when you enter a whole number, Python treats that as an integer, and when that's the only instruction you've entered, Python simply repeats what you've entered. We can also do basic mathematical operations. If you type in 4 plus 3 and hit return, Python will process that and return 7. We can do multiplication using the asterisk symbol. Type in 3 times 5 and it will return 15. Aside from numbers, Python can also process strings, which are sequences of characters, such as words and sentences. Strings can contain letters, numbers, punctuation marks, and so on. To indicate that you're using a string, the contents of the string have to be enclosed in quotation marks, one before the string and one after. You can use single quotes or double quotes, but they have to match. You have to use the same one at the beginning and the end. So to enter a string, we can type a quote and then a word like information for example, then another quote. When we hit return, Python prints the string we entered in quotes and brings us back to the command prompt. Again, that's what Python does when the only instruction you give it is a number or a string. And we can also add strings together. This is called concatenation. To concatenate strings, we can use the plus sign. Type in information in quotes, then the plus sign, then theory in quotes, and hit return, and Python will print information theory all one word, since neither of the original strings contained a space. Now, if we include numbers in the strings and add them together, they won't be processed as integers. If you type in 2 in quotes, plus 2 in quotes, and hit return, the result will be the string 2, 2. Strings can also be multiplied by integers, and this will repeat the string that many times. If you type in OMG in quotes, then the asterisk for multiplication, and then the number 3, not in quotes, and hit return, it prints the string OMG, OMG, OMG. Now, Python gets a lot more complicated beyond all that, but for the purposes of explaining Kolmogorov complexity, this is really all you need to know. So, what is Kolmogorov complexity? The Kolmogorov complexity of an object is the length of the shortest description of that object. And a description can be a series of instructions in Python, for example. Suppose we have a message that is just the letters A, B, repeat 10 times. In Python, that would be 22 characters long, 20 characters in the string, plus the two quotes at either end indicating that it's a string. But it doesn't have to be that long. We can use Python instructions to express the fact that it's a, b repeated 10 times. And we can do this by entering a, b in quotes times 10. When we hit return, it generates
generates the original string, and the instructions we entered were shorter than entering the entire string. Those instructions were a description of the string, AB times 10. Because there's a lot of repetition in that string, it's not very complex. It doesn't contain that much information, and the description is shorter than the string itself. Now suppose we change the string so one of the B's is an A instead. What would be the instructions for generating this new string? We can express it as AB times 4 plus AA plus AB times 5. Python's order of operations performs multiplication before addition, and these instructions are almost as long as the string they describe, and they're much longer than the description of the previous string. Even though the new string itself isn't any longer than the last one, it's more complex, and it contains more information. Now what if we take the original string, AB times 10, and remove one of the A's? The string is one character shorter now. How would we describe it? It can be expressed as AB times 3 plus B plus AB times 6. This is nearly as long as the string itself, and it's longer than the description of the first string, AB times 10. Even though this string is shorter than the first one, its description is longer, and it contains more information. Now, what if we took the original string, AB times 10, and rearranged it? It contains 10 A's and 10 B's, and we can reorder it so we have a new string with 10 A's and 10 B's, but in a random order. How would we describe this new string? Well, any instructions we could come up with would end up being even longer than the string itself. So the best we can do is simply enter the entire string as an instruction. And this is much longer than the description of the original string, AB times 10. Accordingly, it's more complex and contains more information. Furthermore, when the description of a string is just as long as the string itself, or longer, that string can be said to be algorithmically random. And it's also incompressible. You see, by making a description of a string that is shorter than the string itself, we are are compressing it, making it smaller. If there is no smaller description for a string, that makes it incompressible. Now, there is a catch to Kolmogorov complexity. Unlike measurements such as entropy in classical information theory, Kolmogorov complexity cannot be computed. That is, there's no way to calculate the Kolmogorov complexity for a given string so that you could say the Kolmogorov complexity of this string equals n. However, we can find an upper bound for Kolmogorov complexity complexity. If we can come up with a way to describe a string that is shorter than the string itself, we can determine that the Kolmogorov complexity of that string must be less than or equal to the length of that description. So that's a basic overview of the principles behind Kolmogorov complexity, a way of measuring the information content of individual items. I hope you found this helpful.